So a very good morning to everyone, and uh, I welcome you again to our class. So today we are going to talk about money in the organization. Um, I'll speak about the balance sheet, assets, liabilities, profit and loss statement, return on equity, asset turnover, and finally, the financial leverage. Uh, when I looked at the uh, financial documents that are used to report on the performance of any business or any company, there's a big number of, 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 uh, of documents that we could look at. But I, I thought <clears throat> as aspiring entrepreneurs and maybe people who are not really in the, uh, you're not doing a degree in finance, if we really understand what's a balance sheet and what's a profit and loss statement, this is a very good start. And, and also to be aware of terminology like assets, liabilities, as well as return on equity, asset turnover, and the financial leverage, I thought this would be really, really um, uh, a good beginning. And these are the things that I expect to see in your business plan. So I would like you to, within the business plan, to prepare a forecast if the company were to operate, let's say, for a year, how do you think the profit and loss uh, statement will look like? And also, how would the balance sheet would look like? Now, before I start, let me just have a small exercise. Just looking for this. So let's say, let's say you would like to start a business. And let's say that this business is to sell hot dog just out there. So what will you need to, to, to start the business? The basic things. Uh, OK, you'll need hot dogs. Yes, yeah. So maybe Asmeri can help me with the, with the so you will, you, will, you, will need, you will need hot dogs. So how much would that cost? Just give me a number, maybe for, for a day kind of operation. Uh, 50 ringgit. OK, so, so everything is in ringgit. So 50. Uh, what else do you need? A grill. Yes, grill. A grill. grill. So how much will that cost? Other people can help also? Just give me any number, just any number. 200. 200. <laughs> okay, what else? Yes. Uh, we need oil. Oil. Bread. Uh, uh, salad. Mustard, right? So all these things, how much do you think, roughly? Um, it's like uh, 100. 100, okay. So, so, so let, let's say, let's say we, 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 we stop there, we don't put an ad, and, but let's say that's what we will need. So total, what you will need 350. So let's say that's what you'll be needing, 350 ringgit. And let's say when you put your hand in your pocket, you have only 100 ringgit. So this is total needed is 350 cash in hand is 100 so you still need for you to start this is very very basic isn't it you need another 250 well wh where will you get that 250 from um you can get a loan from some sme banks so you, 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 you go to the bank and say, I want to start a business to sell uh, hot dogs, and they will give you 250. No, really, if you want to do it, where will you get the money from? Honestly. You'll get the money from investors. 
friends. So what, what, when, you, yes, when you need money now, where, where do you really go? Yeah, you go to the parents, okay? So just say it. So, so you, you, will, you, will, you will borrow the money. You will borrow the money maybe from your parents, right? So, so let's say that this money actually need to be given back. Your, your parents expect that you will pay them back, or your friends, or your SME bank, or whatever, they will loan you or lend you the 250 uh, ringgit. So this needs to be given back, right? So this is actually a responsibility for you to give back. This is an obligation that you will need to give back. Am I right? So we call this a liability. So this is a liability from a business point of view because this is something that is expected from you to pay. This is something that's required from you to, you are obliged to pay back. So this is called a liability. This, which belongs to you as an owner, this amount that belongs to you as an owner is called the owner's equity or sometimes shareholders equity. So this is the equity. And this, which is the total, is called the assets. So this is really a golden rule. You have to always remember and understand that assets equals equity plus liability. And equity is what you own as a business owner, what belongs to you, while the liability is the obligation, the responsibility towards others. It's, uh, what you borrow is part of it, but as we will go through the lecture, you will see that it has variety of uh, of, of, of types. So the, the financial document that describes this equation, and the equation is assets equals equity plus liability, is called a balance sheet. So this sheet has to always be Balanced. Always the assets equals the equity plus the liability. So everything that the business owns, everything that the business has is called the asset. So for your case was maybe the grill, the, uh, the hot dog, the bread. But for this university, it would be the land, the labs, the buildings, the computers, the, um, the programs, everything is, is an asset. And everything that we have, we either used the shareholder's money to purchase or get, and hence it's called the equity, or we have borrowed the money from somewhere, and that's called, as I said, the liability. So always assets equals liabilities plus equities, sometimes called shareholders' equities or owners' equity. And the financial statement that's called balance sheet summarizes this equation. Clear? Now let me move to the assets and talk more about them. So any economical resource that can be used to develop or deliver your value proposition is, is an asset. So the asset normally have a monetary value, so it can be cash, or it can be something that can be converted into cash. So we have three types of assets. 
The first type that's called current asset. So a current asset would be a real cash, either in the drawer or in the bank that the business owns. Or it could be something that can be easily converted into cash. And it's kept with the intention of being converted into cash. So if you are, if you are a goldsmith and you have gold and you are planning to sell that, that's, that can be considered a current, uh, a current asset. This is something that you want you, you will be converting into cash. So the cash and the, the assets, the other things that you can and will maybe convert into cash in the near future are called current assets. You have another type that's called long-term assets. Long-term assets are things that you don't really want to or you are not planning to sell in the very near future. So for example, for the university, the campus is actually a long-term asset. They are not selling the campus. They don't, they don't have plan to, to sell the campus. For a fact, a plant, if you are uh, uh, having a plant that manufactures computers or, or uh, furniture, the plant itself is not something that you are planning on selling. Your machinery uh, that you are having, any equipment or tools that you are utilizing to develop and deliver your, your, your value proposition, uh, and, and you need them to make that uh, value proposition, are called long-term assets. There's an, a third type, which is called the intangible asset. So a, a company owns patents. This is intangible. Um, even a university, like let's say, uh, Taylor's University, it has agreements with the government, agreements with uh, other universities around the world. This agreement could be just a piece of paper, but it actually it, it's worth something. So if we were to sell the university, we have to give a monetary value to the fact that we have programs that are approved by the government to run. We have agreements with the top universities in the world so that we can collaborate, we can send our students for. These are not necessarily things that I could transfer. They are not something that I could sell, but they are still an asset. And because of the non-concrete nature of them, they are called intangible. So any question about the assets thus far? Before I move on? While we are discussing, uh, I really would like you to think of the business that you are working on and think of the business plan that you will eventually develop. And ask yourself, so what's an asset? What's a liability? And through that, you, you may have a question and then we can, you know, we can uh, further deliberate or, or, or discuss. But if you don't have question, that's also fine, so we can finish earlier. So that's the asset. Now I want to talk about two terms that are related to assets, that are depreciation and appreciation. So let's say the business has a car. So our uh, vice chancellor, the university buys a car for him. And let's say the car cost us that amount of money when we purchased it in 2010. So this is an asset. And let's, let's say, its cost is 300,000 ringgit. So that's an asset for the, for the university in 2010. Now, in 2011, what is the value of the car? Do you think it's going to be more or less? It's going to be less. This is called depreciation. So from an accounting point of view, from a financial report, reporting point of view, you need to account for the fact that the assets that you are owning as a business can change, most likely goes down. And, and, and there, are, there are ways to calculate it. So for example, uh, the company will, 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 will look at the car and say, this car uh, can, be, can work for how long? Let's say we plan to keep it for five years, and after five years we are going to sell it for half of its value. So we 
allocate the depreciation in the value over the five years that we are planning to keep the car, for example. Now, if you are having uh, uh, computers, so the computers will operate for a certain period of time. So let's say for the rules and regulations of our university, a computer will operate for three years. After three years, how much do you think is the value of the computer? It has literally no value, so it's, it's zero. So let's say the computer that we purchased today for 2,000 ringgit, it's gonna be depreciating until it reaches a zero value, and that's the time where we write it off. So it's no longer even an asset. It's something to be given away or recycled or, or thrown. So this kind of reduction in the economical value of different assets is called depreciation. And this needs to be accounted for and reported. Some other, value, some other uh, assets may actually increase in value, depending on the economy or where you are. Often, if you have a land, the value of the land increases. So if, if you buy um, a piece of land in, uh, you know, in the right place, year on year, it will appreciate. And that needs to be reflected as well in your balance sheet. So this is what I have about depreciation and appreciation. And I really would like you not to go into the, um, the details of how to calculate it. This is really the job of the accountants. But I want you, the key thing is awareness. You need to be aware that when you purchase something, it will depreciate over time or certain things that you get them for, you know, a land or whatever other uh, uh, asset may actually appreciate. But most of the, uh, of the asset get uh, depreciated as we, as we move on. So we talked about the assets, which is the left-hand side of our equation. So the assets equals the liabilities plus the equity. So the left-hand side of our equation. So what about the liabilities? So as I told you, the liability is an obligation, something that you, you will eventually have to pay, um, a, a loan that you have to pay, or, or uh, a fine that you have to pay. But it includes also things like what we call accounts payable. So accounts payable are things, even if you haven't paid them yet, you know that you will need to pay them. So an example, um, to run a program, uh, you need to pay maybe a monthly fee to the Malaysian Qualification Agency to keep that uh, accreditation on. So we know that every year, having hundreds of programs running, there's a certain amount of money that needs to be paid. So we need to allocate it. Uh, uh, it could be maybe we've done uh, something wrong with the building and there is a fine that needs to be paid. Uh, that's, these are things that we know that we need to pay. So we call them account uh, payable. The wages, the salaries, my salary, my colleague's salaries are things that the company knows that it needs to pay us. And, and, and that's also under, will appear under the liabilities, which as you remember, we said it's an obligation. The taxes, although they pay it only at the end of the year, but the company knows that certain amount of taxes need to be paid. The debts, so the money that is borrowed, so um, the interest plus the, the installment we, that we have to, 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 to pay. To pay. And it's any obligation that uh, a business, an organization uh, gets itself into. So it could be, for example, uh, a company had an issue with, uh, with its uh, workers and the workers sue the company and they win. So there is an obligation now that the company pays a certain amount of money to them. So this becomes suddenly 
a liability that needs to be paid. Otherwise, maybe there is further legal action that will complicate the life of the, um, uh, of the company or the organization. So I want to show you a, a, a balance sheet of a company that I created in my, in my mind. Now, the balance sheet could be really, really long, but I just to fit it in one slide, I limited the, um, the amount of entries. So this is uh, XYZ, Sandri Amberhad, and everything shown is in millions of ringgits. So, and let's say this is by the 31st of December 2012. So the assets, the company has cash of 151.2 million. So this could be the money that they have in the bank. It's cash. So that's the first part of the assets. Uh, accounts receivable, let's say, is 22 million. Account receivable is the opposite of accounts payable. So account receivable is money that we have sold goods, but we are yet to collect the money. Uh, students who didn't pay their fees yet, but we know that they will be paying them later, for example. So these are all accounts receivable, money we know that we will, we will be receiving. Uh, inventories. So if, if this is, a, if this is a, a company that manufactures cars, we do have, uh, let's say, 50,000 cars that we know that we are going to sent to our distributors. So this is an inventory we have now. Not only the cars, the finished goods, but also maybe we have tires, we have, uh, we have car, part, uh, car uh, parts and other things that we have kept in our stores, which has an economical value. So we call that inventories. So, and, and we can add other things to that. Maybe that company owns patents or whatever. But let's, let's, let's focus on these three, and let's say the total assets of the company is 183.1 million. So this is the first set of entries that's related to the assets. So this is the total. So this is everything that this company has. If I were to evaluate it now, it's, that's its value. What about the liabilities? So accounts payable, let's say, is 50 million, 50.2 million. So accounts payable, as I said, are things that we know that we need to pay. Uh, some obligations that are you know, generally uh, we have to pay. Um, wages payable, so the, the salaries that we need to pay is, let's say, 20 million. Income tax payable, so we know that at the end of, because of the profitability of the company during that period of time. And we know that we will be need, needing to pay, let's say, five million in, 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 in tax. The uh, debt, what we have to pay back the banks in terms of uh, interest plus the installment. And so that brings the total amount of liabilities to, let's say, 102.4. So where, where will the, uh, the rest of the money come? That would be the shareholders' equity. So the shareholders have ha had a common stock of 53 million. Common stock is the shares. So let's say these are shares that they are owning, and, the money, and to own it, they put real money into, into the uh, organization. Uh, additional paid up capital. So the owners came up with their own extra money to, to add, 22 plus million. And finally, retained earnings. Retained earning is, you know that the shareholders, after the end of the financial year, there is some profit that they could actually take. So that's the return on their investment, let's say. But the owners could choose to put the money back into the, uh, the company maybe to, uh, to buy more inventories. So this is how the, how the shareholders' money is converted into assets. So the total shareholders' equity should be 80.7. So by right, if you add 102.4 to 
to 80.7, you should get your total assets, if I got the math right. So this is how a, sh a, a, a balance sheet uh, looks like. And it has to be balanced. There is no way that it is not balanced. So any question about the balance sheet? Cash? Is it not balanced? What happens if not balanced? Okay, so, so the, the question is what happens if it's not balanced? Yes. Yes. Um, what happens if the balance sheet is not balanced? Right. So uh, the, the balance sheet is like this. Let's say I am. With my bag, okay, with my bag, I am 90 kilograms together, the bag and me, 90 kilograms. So this is me. This, what you see in the 183.1 is things in existence. So there is inventory, there is cash, there is uh, cars, uh, and there is money that is gonna be paid, so together, together is I am 90 kgs, okay? Let's say that this bag does not belong to me. It belongs to you. I'm just carrying it for you, or I'm just borrowing it from you. So this is what? Is a liability. This part is a liability. And let's say this is five kg, okay? So what is my weight? Is 85. So is there any possibility that 5 plus 85 is not 90? There is, if you have a lousy accountant. So they made a mistake. So this is, this is you have to understand it. You start from the total asset. These are things, if you, if you count them right, this university has a campus, this university has uh, uh, people in it, it has programs, it has computers, it has cars. These are things that we know in existence. Now, this total value, part of it is owned by the owners and part of it is borrowed from the bank. That's it. So there's no way that the balance sheet is not balanced. Unless you made a mistake somewhere, then you need to go and check, check it out. Make sense? But very good question, thank you very much. So this is the first financial document that I would like you guys to, to remember. It's no secret, this is gonna be in the exam. I'm expecting it in the, in the business plan. So it is extremely important. I'm telling you there are only two uh, documents, financial documents that I'm talking to you about, which is the balance sheet and the profit and loss sometimes called PNL. So let's now talk about the profit and loss. And this one would be more interesting because it can go in many directions. So let's say for the same company, by the end of December, the net sales, sometimes called the revenue, is 150 million. Now, a revenue is not a profit. So the, the fees that you guys pay us is a revenue, but it's not all profit. It's not all the owner of the university will take home, and it's not because they still have other things. So let's say this is actually a po is gonna be a positive one. Um, so let's say the cost of sale, or the sometimes called the cost of sold goods is 50 million. So this is, if I bought this for 150 ringgit, maybe the cost to manufacture it is only 50 ringgit. So the guy sold it to me for 150, but to make it, it cost him 50. So the net sale is, let's say, 150 million, 
the cost of sales, sometimes called the cost of sold goods, is 50. So you will have a gross profit. This is gross. This is not net. You still cannot take this home yet. The gross profit is 100 million. Now, interestingly, even if you have revenue, you may not be profitable. Even when you have gross profit, you may not end up to be profitable as well. Now, selling expenses. So if I go back to this example, I bought this from uh, machines, the shop that is, that is here. And these people have staff, have an, uh, 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 rented a, a place, they pay electricity, uh, maybe they do some advertisements. So, so let's say the selling expenses is 15 million. General and administrative expenses. You know, there are people behind. So if in the university, um, you don't really see the account department, the HR department. You don't see these people. You, you, you deal maybe with mostly with your lecturers, with the people from the dean's office, but you don't really see the back end of the operation. But this operation still needs to be paid for. So let's say the general and administrative expenses is another five million. And the stuff that we are using has collectively depreciated by 15 million. So the cars, the equipments, the computers have lost that much of its value. Then the total operating expenses is gonna be 35 million, which is the 15 plus 5 plus 15. So totally, to run this operation that maybe made me this product, although I, ran, I, I had a gross profit, but still there's a 35 million that is operational expenses that needs to be paid. So that brings your operating income to 65 million. So that's the 100 million minus 35 million. So are you profitable? We actually don't know yet. So let's see. Now, you need to pay interest. So let's say the interest is 15 million. And maybe there are some other expenses. Uh, franchise fees, license fees. Uh, there was a lawsuit for whatever. Uh, there was damage of a shipment and we, we have to pay insurance, things like that. So then total non-operating expenses would be 25. So that's the other expenses and the interest expenses, which are not directly related to, to giving you this product or this service. So that will bring your profit before tax to 40 million. Okay? So now, now it's starting to look good. So you have at least a profit that you will need to pay tax on. And let's say the tax is 12 million. So you will end up with 28 million. So this is a profitable company. So the net profit is 28 million. It's not the 150 revenue, it's not the 100 gross profit, but it is after you remove the, both the non-operational and operational, sometimes called direct and indirect expenses, then you will end up with the profit uh, before tax, and after you deduct the amount that you will be eventually paying the government as a tax, then you will end up with the, the net profit. Now, if we look at this, so let's say we have a revenue of 150. Let's say we have a cost of uh, sold goods of 50, and we get a gross profit of 100. If any of these expenses get inflated for whatever reason, you could literally end up in having 
incurred a loss. Now, what is this line called? This line, the last line. I want you to try through the, the mic. Okay, if, if you, if you want to call it something line, what would you call it? Okay. Uh, profit margin. The profit margin. No, this is a line. So what do you call it? The good line? Bottom line. A bottom line. So this is the bottom line. Have you heard this? They say the bottom line is, so actually and figuratively, this is really the bottom line. So when people talk about the bottom line, they're talking about the last line in a profit and loss statement. Sometimes it's called income statement. So the bottom line is, are you profitable or not? So if this is uh, not profitable, then uh, the way it looks in, in, in the financial statement, they put it in brackets. So if it's in brackets, it means it's a negative value. So you are actually incurring a loss. Um, if the company is private, so it's privately owned, then you are not obliged to share this information with the public. But you are obliged to declare it to the authorities, to the income tax and, and uh, uh, a company register and, and things like that. If the company is a public listed company, then you are obliged to declare this document and make it available in the public domain. Okay, any question about the profit and loss statement? Good. So now let's move on and we talk about something we call it return on equity. So I, I, I want to, now you've given, you, I've shown you the balance sheet, I've shown you the income statement or the profit and loss statement. So how do I read it? How do I analyze it? So there are a few ways to actually um, do that, assess the financial performance of, of a company. And one of the most popular one is what's called return on equity. What's equity? Okay, is it? Uh, equity is the cash in hand. Is equity the cash in hand? Yes. yes. Who, th who says yes, raise your hand. Equity is cash. Raise your hand confidently so that the Okay, so if you, if you are an owner and you have a car that you own in the business, this is not equity? So this campus is not equity? The land on it is not equity? It is equity. It's equity, but it's not cash in hand. So what I mean by cash in hand? Yes. What I mean by cash is like um, cash or loan, anything uh, intangible that's considered under... Under what? Under Everything, the, everything the, the, intangible the, the, is considered under cash. The value in hand. The value in hand. Yeah. So that's the equity or the asset? No, no that's the asset. Yeah. Okay, so what's the equity? The equity is the, what the entrepreneur have. Yes, so it's what the owner owns. So that's yours. It's not the bank's, it's not somebody else says is yours, is your part of the business. Whether it's cash or land or whatever, if it's yours, so that part is, is equity. So return on equity, it means if you have put so much money in the, in the business, so, in, 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 so let's say in this business you earned 100, you earned 50 ringgit. Profit. So you've got profit of 50 ringgit. And then, so your total, the total money with, with you, 
plus the grill, which is the value, would be 400 ringgit. So you could return the 250, and the 50 is actually return on, on, your, on your equity. So this is equity. We called it cash in hand when we started, but we eventually say it's equity. So the profit or the return on equity here. So this is one of the very popular um, financial uh, measures. And it measures the earning per dollar over a certain period of time, normally a year, on the equity invested. So ROE is the net profit over the shareholders' equity. So this, if, if, if our entrepreneur here used 100 ringgit of his own money as an equity and earned 50 ringgit, the return on equity is 50 over 100, or 50%. So that's very good, very, over one day. That's a wonderful, wonderful return on equity. It means if he runs the business one more day, he will get his money back. So this is return on equity. We would like it to be as high as possible. OK? Can the return on equity be negative? Can the return on equity be negative? Yeah, uh, who wants to answer? And that would be in which case? So if you, if you lose money, then your return on equity is negative. Very good. Now, now, now you will see that you know, accounting is actually mathematically is not complicated at all. But you, know, you need to have some awareness of the terminology. And, and, and that's really, really going to be useful for anyone who is interested in, uh, in, in starting a business or being in a managerial position where the owner of the business expects you to track uh, this kind of uh, uh, financial figures. So for XYZ company, uh, if you recall, the, the profit was, the net profit was 28 million, while the total shareholders equity was 80.7, so their ROE for that year was 35%. So this is something that you could, you could have any um, um, uh, profit and loss and also, sh uh, and also balance sheet of any company and you work out the ROE for them. So it's going to be fun. So ROE has three determinants. We can put it, we'll play with it a bit mathematically to create three components that can lead to the ROE. So it, it has, so it's the net profit over shareholders' equity, right? I mean, being engineers, you could just cancel out this, cancel out this, you have the original ratio that we started with. But there is a reason why I want you to do the net profit over sales the sales over assets, and then assets over shareholders' equity. Because each one of these ratios has its own meaning. When you multiply them together, you will get the return on equity, which is just telling you the amount that you put in this company, is it worth it or not, from a financial point of view. But you can dig deeper when you put it in this format. So the net profit over sales, over the revenue, is called the profit margin. OK? So the net profit over the sales, and the sales is the overall revenue that we have, we have got. So that's called the profit margin. So let's say, let's say an average student uh, pays us 20,000 ringgit a year. And 
when we pay the staff and pay the interest to the bank and provide you with all the services and we pay the electricity and the water, whatever, we, the, our net profit on, on, uh, on, on you is going to be, um, so the sale is 20, the net profit on one individual is five. So it's five over 20, that's our, that's our profit margin. The sales over assets is called the asset turnover. And the asset over shareholders' equity is called the financial leverage. I'm going to talk about each one of these individually for a short while because um, I, I believe these are uh, very important. So let's start with the asset, sorry. Yes, the asset over, the sales over asset, which is the asset turnover. So this measures how well assets are being used to produce revenue. So if you have big sales, means big revenue from a moderate kind of assets, that's, that's good. So the assets that you have, you are using them well to produce, to produce revenue. If I take it as the example of the university, so let's say we have 500 lecture theaters, but we are taking students. So the lecture theater is an asset, right? We own it, it's within, whether we, we, we paid for it or we borrowed the money as a liability. The business owns 500 lecture theaters, but we have only half of them. We managed to get only uh, that much of students or that many of students to fill only half of them. So the revenue that we are getting, the sales that we are achieving over the value of the asset is not that good. So we are not really utilizing our assets to generate as much revenue as we could have generated. But if all our lecture theaters are so utilized to the extent that you know, you have to stay until eight and nine o'clock in the evening to take classes. So maybe this is, it means we are, from a business point of view, at least from one angle, it means that the asset turnover is good. So we are really utilizing our assets to generate more revenue. Who can give me another example? Maybe an example that fly. Ah, yes, Cash. Uh, like you, instead of creating like one big parking lot, you create like a stories of parking lot. So therefore, you use that particular land well, your asset. Yes. To generate more revenue, if yes. you charge for the parking, of course. Right. Right. So this is one way. Uh, you think of an of an airline that if the if the flight flying from Kuala Lumpur to London, the airplane is going there anyway. The staff that has to staff it, the pilot is, so the asset is, is there. Now, if you manage to make it a full flight, that's a good usage of asset. So that's for one flight. Now, if the flight, if, let's say the, 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 the airplane, when it goes to London, it doesn't stay idle there, it may be, does a, a little bit of domestic flight within that country if the regulation allows. Uh, that's even better utilization of, of assets and that will give you um, uh, more on the asset turnover. It's, it means you are using your assets very efficiently. Any question about that? So that was one of the the financial leverage. Okay, I want you to think and tell me what does this mean? What does this indicate? What, what can I read 
from it. So when it is large, what does that mean? When this, val when this ratio is big, what does that mean? In layman terms, you have so many assets and little shareholders equity. What does that mean? It's as simple as that. You have so many assets. Shareholder equity is small. Please try. Yes, I think. Oh, okay, Mohammed, then you can try. Okay. And then shareholders are rich. Yes. Shareholders are rich. Then. The shareholders are rich. Yes. Okay, cash. I, I think in that case the company is rich. The company is rich. Yeah, because there's less shareholder equity, so more is more more of the assets are belong to the company. No. So, okay. Okay, good. What, what, someone else wants to... You could tell I'm not with you on the same page. Uh, here, 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 here. Yeah. Um, the company has a very large liability or something. The company has huge liability. Thank you very much. Very good. The company has huge liability. It doesn't mean it's a rich company. On an individual basis, it means my salary is that much. I just go and purchase a BMW for myself, another BMW for my wife. So I borrowed. I just borrowed. So I have borrowed so much money. You know, I, I, I look rich maybe to you. But what I own is very little. So this indicates that a company has big Liability. Okay, so this is how you need to think. It's all common sense. Now, is it good or bad to have big liability? You want to try? Yeah. Just try this. Yep. It doesn't mean that you need to have a uh, very high liability, right? High equity also you can, can lead to a lot of assets. No, assets is both the liability and the equity. So I want you to, no, you don't think that asset is a good thing. Asset is both, the asset could be both liability and equity. Yeah, so if you have a high liability, you've borrowed a lot of money, what are the risks? Or is it a good thing? Can it be a, 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 a bad thing? Can it be sometimes good thing, sometimes bad thing? You want to try, Chris? Um, I think it can be both a good thing and a bad thing. Okay. Because if you have um, a lot of um, equity, you can have more. You can take more risk, but the risk might not pay off. So, 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 so can you can you repeat that again? Um, as in, when you have more um, equity. You have more equity, but this guy doesn't doesn't have. So we are saying if the financial leverage is high. Yeah, uh, I'm saying that if, um, as in, because he has no, uh, he has a lot of liability. So yes. Then you take risk with other people's money. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so what is the what? What will happen here? So if so if you are unable to pay, what will happen? Um, if you are unable to pay, then you would bankrupt. You but, get but if you manage to make money, then you yes. can. Yes. So the risk is high. If you go and go and 
and take that risk with other people's money, yes, yeah, you, the bank will, will, will suffer, but you also will, get, will go bankrupt. Now when you go bankrupt, next time when you want to do business, when you go to the, the, to the venture capitalist and say, look, my track record is great. You know, I've tried this and you know, I've borrowed so much money and then I, the company went bust. Do you think anyone else will give you any money anymore? Or even the venture capitalist himself, because this could be, you know, it's his money. But if you make it, then it's gonna be great. Can you think of a business where this has to be high? A business where most of the money is not their money. So this has to be high. Please think. A bank, yes. Yes, yeah, so the bank, if you think about it, the money that they lend to you is not theirs. It's the other depositor's money. So if you are looking at a bank, then this is supposed to be high. Okay? So this is the financial leverage. So as, we, as you rightly said, it's an indication to the degree of which business is relying on borrowed money. Huh? Yes, question there, please. Sir, can a bank go, go bankrupt? Yes. Can, oh, uh, yes, we have seen them going bankrupt. I mean, the f last few years, like nobody's business. As a matter of fact, in the United States, without the government intervention, there are some big names would have just disappeared. Have you heard of Lehman Brothers? This, is, this, is, this was a famous bank, and it just went bust. Yeah. So, so now let me tell you one thing. If all of us... If all, where's, do you, you have a bank account? Which bank? Uh, my main one is public bank. Okay, let's say public bank. So if everyone that has a bank account with public bank goes to public bank now and wants their money, if everyone just queue in front of the, each and every uh, branch, the bank will collapse. The moment public bank will collapse, the, the people say, oh, so this bank, you know, this banking thing is not really reliable. So those who are with Maybank will go to that bank and they start queuing, and then the entire economy will collapse. So that's why, if you notice, if you follow the news in Greece over the last two months, did you, did you know what did they do? They actually prevented the depositors from withdrawing the money. You can withdraw only that much money. So the government, this is a government uh, kind of instruction. You, you have a million dollar there or a million euro there. You go, they give you 200 euro per day, whether you like it or not, because they don't want people, if we all rush to take our money, then the entire economy will collapse. As a matter of fact, do you know that the money that is nominally in the economy, we don't have enough bank notes comparable to it, because it all, all happens in the, in the clouds. Everything happens in the, in the computer. So they take your money, and then they package it, and then they give me a loan, but they don't really give the loan. They will give me a house maybe instead. And the, the developer who developed the house have taken a loan from someone else, and it's a very complex system. And that's why uh, the... Uh, uh, financial institutions often employ mathematicians, computer scientists, and engineers to actually make the system even more complicated so that people don't know what's going on. Yeah. And some people can get very rich. Okay? Yeah. Thank, thank you. So, so as, as, you, as you've just said, the business that has take very high risk you know, they can go bankrupt, but if it, the wind goes their way, they could actually make it quite big because they, maybe they didn't have money in the beginning, but they suddenly, you know, can get a good ROE and then they, they can make it. So this is, this is uh, just a, a table that shows it's quite an old data. I got it from the internet. So it shows the return on equity for different 
companies. This is a Bank of America. This is a power company, um, uh, an oil company, uh, Harley Davidson and Nike and so on and so forth. So you see the return on e equity is here. It's very comparable, but Intel did, I think, the best for 1998. And I just want you to really notice that the return on equity is the profit margin. And the profit margin was the net profit over the revenue or the sales times the turn, uh, the asset turn turnover and the financial leverage. And you look at which one has the highest financial leverage. The bank, yes, the Bank of America, and that's what we have predicted. Okay? Does it make sense? Any question about, because I'm about to end the lecture? Yes, there's a question there. It's about the financial leverage. So, sir, if my assets are large, right, and my shareholders, shareholders are less, is it going to affect the net profit? If your assets are large, large and my shareholders are less, and the shareholder equity is small. Yes. Is yes. it going to affect the net profit? Will that affect the net profit? Yes. OK, very good question. So can you help me as usual? So the question is this. If the financial leverage is high, so he borrowed a lot of money, his own money that he put in is very small, will that affect the net profit? Who, who would like to, to attempt to answer this. Is there, is there a linkage between the net profit and the, and the um, financial leverage? Um, yes. In the case of like the bank, yes. for example, yes. if um, they have a lot of financial leverage, they can have higher net profit because they can give out more loans. But you see, if you, if you look at this, for example, if I look at this table, really, these are very comparable, right? 14.6, 14.3, 14.6. But you see, the financial leverage for these two people is much lower. So I, looking at the table, which is from real data, I don't see any linkage. So it doesn't mean if I have borrowed a lot, then I will make more money or less money. It really depends on the product itself. So if you are, if you are into uh, uh, something that is um, new in, 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 uh, in, in an industry where the profit margin is, is, is high, uh, then if you make it, you will, you will have, you will have a, a good profit. And, I, and you could see it's, it's different. Now, maybe the question would be, the question would be if we were to think is, if these two companies, which are having an, a similar, so this is not a bank, because this is not a bank, this is not a bank. The bank is expected for the financial leverage to be high. But if these people borrowed a lot of money, will that mean they will be making a lot of profit? So let, let, me, let, me, let, me, um, let me try to answer it again. If you have more, if you borrow more, so you will need to service the loan. So you will be paying interest. And that interest will be part of the cost that will be taken away from your, uh, from your uh, uh, profit. So for the gross profit, you have to deduct the amount of money that you are going to pay to service the loan. So in that sense, yes. That doesn't, does it make sense? So if I go back to, to the... So let's say this is my gross profit, okay? And this is my interest expense. Now, if 
most of the money that I'm working with is borrowed money. What will happen to this? Isn't it? Because you will pay more interest. So this will definitely reduce your, in that sense, it will reduce your, your net profit, which will in, in turn reduce your profit margin. Does it make sense? Okay. Very good question. Any other question? So, yes, question there, thanks. Uh, can you give me another example of a business with high financial leverage? I don't know, you give me. <laughs> I don't know, as I ask you. You ask me. So I, now I ask you to think. So which you think should be having a higher financial, expected to have a, fi a higher financial uh, leverage? No idea. I don't know. We need we need to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not sure about this, but maybe the property line, right? Where, where your, where you put in, how you say, it's it's a it's a big risk. It depending on, of course depends on where you buy. Mm. So a lot of money goes in, for a particular thing, but it's also has a lot of risk to it. So but I think his question is about is the financial high. leverage. <laughs> Yeah, maybe if you're if you're a business that uh, does property uh, I mean like sure. uh, property so development. So let's let's, let's let's think about it. So um, if you go to a company that's doing development, so they have this piece of land, okay, and then they say and they they make a model of the house that hopefully will be completed in three years. They are literally selling you a dream. And you go and say, so who owns this land? Uh, the bank. OK, so uh, what do you own? I own nothing. I just sell you the dream. Do you think you'll buy the house? Actually, one, one of the reasons why people look for a developer that's well established, and, and the developer at times, they, you know, they show you, they say, look, this land is ours. There's no way we will just abandon the project halfway. But if, if most of the money is, uh, is, is borrowed, if there is some complication you know, with the authorities, and, and we have seen in, in, in this country a number of development projects that the developer abandoned them after taking the money from, from the uh, uh, people who have... Uh, so I don't, I, personally, I don't think um, the uh, uh, property developer is is a, a business that will have a higher, uh, they may, but I don't think this is gonna be a, a, an expected thing of them. Yeah, so this will remain an open question. I, I actually don't know. Mm. Okay, any other question? Very good question, any other question? Okay, if there's no other question, then I would like to thank you very much for a very interesting session, and uh, thanks a lot.